Hello and welcome to the 91st video in this series, uh, Programming a Chess Engine in C. So in this video we're going to carry on with the polyglot book stuff that we've been doing. And I'm just going to go back onto the, the website here of HG Muller's um, to have a quick look at the structure of the entry inside the polyglot book itself. Because in the last video we were able to pretty much satisfactorily generate the hash key. In this video we want to start the process of actually reading in the data inside the book. And it's pointed out on the website here that it's a structure with 64 unsigned in bit in, uh, un unsigned integer for the key, 16 unsigned 16 for the move, for the weight, and a normal unsigned 32-bit integer for the learn value. And that the whole structure, of course, makes up 16 bytes with the 8, the 2, the 2, and the 4. So what we want to do is implement inside our program a structure which mirrors this so we can then read in the book entries from the file. So back into the code, first place I'm going to go is into polybook.c and we need to start adding in a little bit of information. So the first thing we're going to do above the poly kind of piece is I'm just going to type def a new structure and this will be our actual book entry structure. So I'll just do this and we'll just call this um, an S underscore and let's just call it poly book and entry. And the way we're going to do this book code is really is as quick and dirty as possible because it'll only be used inside Vice. I'm not planning to have to transport the code or anything, use it in another program because I've already got it in my other chess engines in a different way. Um, so don't recoil in too much horror when I take some shortcuts and things in the next few videos getting this code implemented properly. So inside our structure then we just need to reflect what we had on the website. So we'll have the key with the U64 and what we can actually do is we'll, we'll type out the full definition of the, the rest of the numbers inside there for the unsigned 16 and unsigned 32 integers. So a 16 of course will be an unsigned short and we'll call that then the move and then we want an unsigned whoops, short and this one was the weight and then the last one we need is just a normal unsigned int signed, can't type it, int and then this was the learn value which we're not going to use at all because we won't do any book learning but we need it inside our structure. So we have our polybook entry there. Next thing we're going to need is we're actually going to need to count how many entries we've read in and this is where the first example of not doing things quite in a correct way but I'm simply going to put as a variable in the scope of this file here a num entries. Now we won't use any of the mo most of the functions information inside this file won't be used anywhere else in the program that will be contained in here so I might as well put it here and let's declare it as a naught. So that tells us how many entries we have inside our book. And the next thing we want is we actually want a pointer to that will point to the book that we have read in. So what the way we're going to do things is rather than each time the engine is to move, it's going to search for a move out of the hard-coded or, or the, the file on the hard disk. It's going to read at startup the file into the memory. Uh, the assumption of course here is that the books aren't massively large. Um, I usually use something called performance.bin which is available on the WBEC website which is a pretty good book and is actually a very small file so it doesn't really make any difference reading everything in but bear in mind if you're going to suddenly give a, a 500 uh, megabyte book or something to Vice it's going to stay, sit there a long time reading everything into the memory and if you run out of RAM you're in trouble. So you can handle that in, in other ways obviously but like I said this is going to be slightly quick and dirty and this is the way we'll do it. So we've got that pointer there that we're going to use the entries and this is going to be used much in the same way as we did you remember for our hash table or PV table that we're just going to allocate the memory according to how many entries we find inside the file. Okay so the next thing that remains to be done is to start writing the initialization code for our book and we're going to write a couple of function definitions. One's going to be called init polybook and we're just going to write the declaration and the other one's going to be called void clean oops polybook because of course we need to free the memory up that we've allocated for our entries pointer here so the first thing I'm going to do here because I always forget this stuff later on so that's why I'm doing it now is we're just going to write free and entries and I'm going to take this clean poly polybook whoops copy I need not uh, delete clean polybook and drop this, in, drop this into the bottom of defs.h and I'm also going to drop in the init polybook 
into defs.h in the program code and just put an extern on there as well. Okay, good. And I'm just thinking of something whilst that's popped into my mind with the terminal. Good, I'm back. Okay, so now we've got the init poly book in here. I just want to put this initialization inside our init.c. You remember we've got down the bottom so that we actually initialize the book. And the other thing I want to do is take the clean poly book definition and I want to drop that at the end of uh, the main function in vice.c so that we're actually cleaning up the memory that we've allocated. Good. So the housekeeping is done. Now we can get around to starting to read in the information from the book. And the assumption here is that you're fairly familiar with reading um, binary information in. If not, I've actually done uh, a, vid a small series. The last few videos in my C series actually cover reading in uh, data structures from a final uh, binary file. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So the first thing we need to set up is a file pointer. And we'll call this p file, and this will be set to f open. And then the book's going to be. This is another point where it's um, not so good in terms of extensibility in any kind of way, because I'm hard coding in the name of the book file to keep things faster. Now, usually you would have this as a command line argument, or could even have it as a UCI option to set the type of book that we want to use. But I'm going to use performance bin with an R there, and that's how it is. And the first thing we're going to do, of course, is ask um, if the file is equal to null, then we have an error. Otherwise, we can carry on doing our stuff. So what we'll do here is we'll print here uh, book file not read, so that at least we know that the book file hasn't been read in. And we can maybe try and investigate why. Otherwise, the book file is, has been read in, and we can start actually looking at what we want to be doing here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find out how big the file is. We know that each of our structures is 16 bytes and we want to find out how many of these structures we've got inside the file. So for that we use fseek and then I'm just going to we take the file, no offset and put in seek end just to put our pointer to the end of the file. And now what we can do is we can use ftel to find out how many uh, bytes our pointer has moved along inside the file. So that returns a long, so I can say long position equals ftel of our p file. And now if I divide this position up, then I know that um, by the size of our structure, I know how many structures are in the file. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that if our position is less than the size of our polybook structure, so maybe there's some bytes in there, or indeed no bytes in there. It probably means that the book doesn't contain anything. So I'm going to type a printf and say no entries found. And we'll just return then from there, because of course num entries will have been set to naught anyway, which is what we'll be using later on. So we'll just return directly from here. Now a lot of people don't like return statements in the middle of functions, but hey ho. Okay, but assuming that we've got at least the number of bytes of one structure, we can now have a look at how many structures we actually have inside our file. So we can say num entries equals, and then we'll say the position that we've got to at the end divided by this size of operator here of our structure, or tell us how many structures are inside our file. And now what we want to do is, I'm just going to copy this here so we can print to the screen how many. So we can say ld entries found in file, and we can give num entries here. So now we know how many entries are inside our book file. The next thing we need to do then, obviously, is actually allocate the memory for our entries pointer here. And we do this exactly the same way that we did the memory allocation for the hash table. So we just say our entry is equal then to our polybook entry with a pointer. And then we just use malloc, so the memory allocation, and tell the compiler how much memory we then want to allocate, which will be num entries multiplied by the size of our polybook entry. So that's allocated for us our the memory for our entry pointer. The next thing we need to do then is go back to the beginning of the file 
using rewind so that puts the pointer all the way back to the beginning of the file and now what we can do is we can actually use fread to read all of the structures inside here directly into the memory allocated for the uh, by the entries pointer and to do that we just use fread so I'm going to declare size t and call this return value so value of returned from a following function and for return value I'm just going to set that equal to fread and what we want to do then is that we want to read into our memory that's been pointed to by entries so our block of memory we're reading blocks of the size of our polybook entry structure we're reading in num entries of these blocks and we're reading it from our p file file pointer and the last thing I want to do then here for this video then is just print the return value of fread like so oops I've missed off the percentage here so return value of fread read in oops in from file like this way mixing capitals and low letters as always and put the return value here good so what this function should be doing then assuming everything compiles is we're simply opening the performance.bin opening book we've defined our structure here that we know what kind of structures used for the data inside the opening book we're simply going to the end of the file to find out how many bytes the file contains we're then dividing up the number of bytes by the size of a structure to find out how many structures are then in the file we're then allocating entries which is our structure pointer the amount of memory um, to contain all of these structures here with num entries times the size of the structure and then we're using fre to simply then fill this memory that we've declared with it or fill in blocks of the size of our structure and the number of them being our number of entries so all of that should be pretty self-explanatory if you're familiar with uh, reading data and from files if not then maybe a little bit has been learned so I'm just going to hold my breath and type make and find out how many errors I've made don't seem to be any at all which is a minor miracle and now you can see if I run vice that it says there are 92,000 entries inside the file and fread has now stored into the memory these structures as well and then we've got the hash table in it complete etc etc so what I'm just going to simply do here is type quit which will free up the memory we've allocated for the book here and everything's done good so that's it then for this video and we're at the step now where what we're going to do is we're going to start writing the functions to actually look up an entry inside the book according to a given hash key and the entries are all stored in hash key order from lowest to highest so the way we're going to do it is not the most efficient way of doing it um, but we're simply going to iterate through all of the entries until we hit our hash key store that position and then go to the last entry with our hash key and then store that position and then simply return um, access in our entry structure then all of the available moves in that way which you'll see in the coming videos so i hope that video made some sense and comments questions criticisms welcome as always on youtube